Hey guys, welcome back to Heiko's Garage. I just had to clean out my garage. Too many project things. An edger, outboard engine that's running, an old mower that's, yeah, you know, can be made to work again, handle all beat up. Two generators, both are running. Oh, I can smell old fuel just from standing here. Uh, yeah, so two generators, they are both running. They still need a clean up and the carbs need to be going through. And then of course the boat sitting here. Um, I had to clean up my garage so that I can put my motorcycle on my motorcycle lift. Uh, because my bike is sick and I want to ride. It's beautiful weather outside and I should be riding my airhead and not work on lawnmowers or generators or anything else. So let's go inside and start working on it. So I did a quick study up on uh, the top end reseal um, and also looked up the torque values for all the head bolts and whatnot. Um, so I think I'm pretty good to go. Uh, everyone is always talk talking about the oak top end manual which apparently is still available. Oak uh, was a part of the airhead community that has passed away a um, couple years ago. I don't remember exactly down now, uh, but uh, his wife still makes his top end manual available. I don't own it, uh, but I think I'm gonna still push full steam ahead because I wanna get this done and um, I wanna ride my bike. So these three, uh, are the ones that I have. I actually have more, but um, they're just different versions of the same climber manual. So we're gonna go with those and we're gonna get started. So off we go. Disconnect that. <clears throat> nope. 14 So just a top end reseal, but I will do some inspecting. I will try to uh, pull the, the lifters out to make sure that they are not pitted or worn. All right, let's try to catch the oil here. Yeah? Most likely there's gonna be some oil in your valve cover here. Yeah? when you take it off. And then also remember the two little 10 millimeter nuts, one here, one there. And uh, there's supposed to be a washer. Some people put a flat washer in a wave washer. I usually just have a wave washer behind there. Oh, here's the oil. Here's my wave washer. And I always replace those wave washers, stainless steel. They give some tension but usually they bend flat oh there are actually two washers behind there i have two a flat and a wave didn't even remember that so valve covers the gaskets can be reused we got fresh ones with that kit so i will most likely use fresh ones i'm gonna put them over here and then secure all my little washers at least the flat ones I can reuse. The nut, one of them is still sitting here. And a washer. All right. Now we're gonna let this drip off a little bit. And then everything just comes apart here. Taking those off, the the rockers come off. It's It's always a good idea to mark stuff just to make sure you remember um, how it was supposed to be in here. 
Um, I have aftermarket rocker shafts in here. They are made by Israel Motors in Germany. They are like a improved version, so to speak, but they were also cheaper than the original BMW part. That's why I bought those. And um, yeah, if you have a hard time remembering which, which one goes where, uh, just mark it, label it, put stickers on it, put masking tape on it and write on it. Um, most everything here is interchangeable. So the, the blocks that hold your rocker shafts on, they can be interchanged. There is uh, an installation direction, so where the split is, you can see here the split. So we're just gonna make a mental note of that. I'm just gonna yank it off. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe we wanna put this side in top dead center. <clears throat> Uh, you don't necessarily have to have it in top dead center, but when when you're in top dead center, then there is no um, tension on either of those valves, so both valves are closed, and um, you actually have a valve lash at that point, and um, then it's a little easier to take this off, and you don't have uh, rear tension going on. So we're just going to take the spark plug out. Looks good, very good. Nice color, like a light brown. That's what, what it's supposed to look like. All right, spark plugs off. Now we're gonna pull down the front wheel so that the rear wheel is off the ground. Actually, we're not gonna pull, we're gonna push. usually use a, a jack stand and um, here right in front of the rear wheel there is a cross member in the frame and the jack stand fits right under there the rear wheel just needs to be a little bit off the ground so that we can spin it with a motorcycle in gear all right come on Oof, heavy So now it's pretty much sitting on the center stand and the jack stand here. I'm just going to show you real quick. There you can see it. This is the top of my jack stand and this cross member. There's a rubber pad on my jack stand. All right, let's get back to it. So now I'm just going to put it in a gear and I'm going to spin until I start seeing the piston here. Well, maybe we do a little bit higher gear. Second gear. Maybe get a flashlight. So we have set this cylinder uh, at top dead center. I just looked through the uh, spark plug opening with a flashlight, saw the piston come forward 
and now we have valve flash on both valves so there's play on both ends no tension on it we have to get the corp still off and we have to take at least the the um, the header loose we're gonna do that next Since I always use some copper anti-seize on the nuts here, we should, you know, I wish I would, would have a fresh of set, on, uh, a set of fresh ones. They are a little boogered. So, but since I always put some anti-seize on those, getting them loose is usually not a problem. Easy peasy. So we have the nut and then two rings and they all need to come out of there. That's all good and then we need to loosen the connection to the muffler pots back here and where the clamp is right here and then we can wiggle this all out of the head. That's all we need to do. We don't need to really take it off but it has to slide out of the head. So I'm going to do the other side real quick without you looking. And there it goes. All right, we just put it down. Let it sit here. Barely in the way. All right, so that's good. Header is off. Make sure I still remember where all the clamps go. My mufflers have uh, inserts that uh, serve as a uh, size reducer. So uh, 40 millimeters or 38 millimeters. Now we're gonna take this off. Yeah. 
In a previous video, I uh, did the uh, intakes. They are screwed into the cylinder head and they come loose sometimes or for some people, at least for me. And um, then I build a tool and then use some Loctite and brute force to, uh, to force them in here. Uh, we'll see if they're still tight. The tool didn't work out that well. It was too weak. All right, we're gonna take the intakes loose. Kind of like, like so. Come on. There you go. All right, leave this over here and then leave this dangling here for now like that still feels tight so this one hasn't come loose i'll do the other side when it's time to take that cylinder off so exhaust off intake off and now we can take the for head stud, bolts off, nuts off, and then take the rockers off. Organize my parts here a little bit. You wanna make sure you take them off like you would put them on in a crisscross pattern. Remember how the nuts go, go on here, they have a little bit of a shoulder to them. And the shoulder goes towards the block. I've already marked the blocks themselves. So there's intake top, intake bottom, exhaust top and exhaust bottom. And then I'm just going to take the rockers off in one unit like this. So you have the rocker the blocks and the rocker shafts. My rocker shafts are relatively new. Um, the bearings are also new or relatively, so we don't have to really worry about this. But of course I will inspect everything. So when you take this apart, you can see the end of the, the needle bearings in here. And if you see any kind of wear on the outside of the housing of those needle bearings, you definitely want to replace them or else the needles can fall out. So we're just going to park this over there. Then oh, let's grab a rag and a sharpie, clean this off. So this is the exhaust side, E, and a arrow pointing towards the engine. And then before we reinstall those, we also want to inspect the ends. If you see any kind of pitting or wear, you got to replace them. So, safe spot. I for intake and an arrow. That's good. There's some wear here in the middle and that correlates right with a, a cylinder head gasket. And I wonder if either the cylinder head gasket is not lined up correctly or it's a bad gasket or the Opening is not quite as large as it's supposed to be, but yeah, this is not good and I definitely will take a look at this We still have two nuts that connect the cylinder head to the cylinder They of course also have to come off Dirty nut. Another one. There should be also some washers behind there. Cylinder head is coming out uh, thick. 
massively thick washers. Remember which way you took them off. The bottom doesn't want to come. And there we go. Cylinder head number one coming off. Come on now. Wiggle, wiggle. Biggle, biggle. Oh, come on now. Just be careful when hitting your cylinder head, those, those fins are so tiny and uh, the studs are really long and uh, they might not be 100% straight when you're trying to pull your cylinder head off. You just got to wiggle and work it and work it and don't drop your cylinder head on the ground. Oh, here we go. All right. Cylinder heads off. Oh, and there's the washer that we were missing. So here it goes. See that down there? How those holes of the gasket don't exactly line up with the holes in the in the uh, cylinder. And I'm, I'm guaranteeing you that. So the, the pushrod tubes, they probably spin because of vibration and the constant movement, they spin. And so they were constantly rubbing on this sharp edge and on this sharp edge. And that's not good. So I will have to check my uh, stash. Maybe I have a good set of uh, pushrod tubes that don't have the wear on it, you know, those wear marks. It's probably not a big deal, but I'm not super happy. Um, you know, look at the... The intake side of the piston has carbon washed away and the rest is all nicely carboned up. Um, Okay, and I want to get a really long zip tie or two. We're first going to pull the cylinder off the piston a little bit, pull it all forward. It's already in top dead center, so the piston will not go any further this way. Pull the cylinder off, and then we're going to put a zip tie around the two bottom studs like this so that when we uh, then remove the wrist pin and the connection rod comes out of the piston it will not smack the, the case and then damage that sealing surface so let's see oh here we go oh that's easy easy peasy yeah mm-hmm sliding off And we don't want to pull the piston out too far. So now the skirt is sticking out in the back and we just want to expose the, the wrist pin like so. And that's it. And now we're going to put this catching, protecting. You can also put a zip tie around the connection rod but of course these are not long enough so we're just going to put it underneath make sure you don't throw any dirt in there now you can look right into the innards of this engine we're going to do that here in a second okay didn't go flying there it is so now let's let's take a peek at this one. Sometimes they have one flat side and one rounded side, but this one here, this one in particular, looks the same from both sides. And then 
the the opening was to the top I will research which which direction is the best to put this clip back in so top rear front not sure so we're just gonna throw this in here the carburetor nicely in the way but that went pretty well so both out and now we can stick my homemade tool I have already cleaned this off the, the washer that I have on here fits perfectly the size of the wrist pin so we're just going to stick this through with the two locked nuts and the washer on there so that's good then we're gonna put my my homemade little sleeve over over this single nut that's gonna be the one doing the pulling then two nuts that I will lock against each other it's not 7 16 this 9 16 by the way okay like that just a quick little tightening against each other so and now I'm going to try to line this all up Okay, so now we can hold on to the to one of those two. And slowly spin this one in. The other side I checked, the washer and nut are sitting nicely on the wrist pin. And it's already going in with no resistance whatsoever. So we're not scraping anything off, we're not damaging anything.
Okay, so now we're gonna slide the piston back in. And there comes the piston with the cylinder. The wrist, the connecting rod is sitting on our zip tie so it didn't whack the side of the... Yeah, you can see that uh, the wrist pin doesn't have to come out all the way. And uh, that's good. So now we're gonna put this aside here. Just throw it on top. Hmm, I wonder if this is an oversized piston. There is a marking in there that says 09, 090205 plus. I'm going to look that up. 1275 manufacturer date. This bike is 874. So I wonder, yeah, but it's not the original engine. So I already know that part. Yeah, the cylinder walls really look pretty good. So I'm gonna put this aside here now for, for the time being. Yeah, I just wanted to show you one last thing. Um, down here, where the two push rod tubes go in, where the push rods go into the lifters, um, you don't wanna use a magnet to remove the lifters. You can use some mechanics wire, bend a tiny little hook at the end maybe not even, the lifters have a hole in the middle. And if you stick a piece of mechanics wire in there, that has a little bit of some hook to it, this is not gonna work. You might be able to pull it out without a magnet because you don't wanna accidentally magnetize the lifter and then you're totally attracting metal shavings and such. Let's see if we can make this happen. Just a little hook at the end. And then you stick it in and then it wedges At least we hope. Enough. There you go. You don't want to mix those up either. I wanted to see what the surface that rides on the camshaft looks like. And mine here have absolutely no pitting. Uh, this one has no pitting, no nothing. Outside, of course, you can see that it moves, it spins, it moves in and out. So it's some polished surface and some other areas are not so polished. You can also look into the cup here. That's where the push rod uh, will be sitting in. And uh, you got to make sure that that doesn't have any pitting either. Just like the end of uh, the push rod. But... Uh, this one is just fine, you know. Okay, let's do the mechanic wire trick one more time. Stick it in, wedge it and pull. Okay, here we go. And this one, just like the other one. There's absolutely no Does this even focus on this thing? There. No pitting, no nothing. The cup looks perfect. I'm not even going to wipe the oil off. Just stick it right back in there. So now, now that, that I have the cylinder and piston out of the way, I can um, take a little bit closer look at things inside. So I can see the rockers on the other side. 
I can also see the lobes of the camshaft and they look pretty good. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. So now I'm gonna uh, do a little bit of some wiping around here and then cover the hole up so we're not getting any kind of debris in there or dust. Someone opens the garage door and the wind's blowing outside. So we're just gonna make sure. So I gotta go to night shift soon. Gotta take a little nap. Make sure I'm rested for the job. So like that, perfect. Good, all right, see you later.
So when you get new pushrod tube seals, they kind of look like this. They have this uh, uh, asymmetrical shape. One side has those ribs on it and one side is relatively skinny and has a line on it, right? The line points downwards, sits like this and the ribs go into the case. Here in my case, I don't know if you see this, but the side with the ribs are on the outside like this. And then this, this shaped, cone-shaped end is pushed into the case and that is wrong. So you gotta put the ripped side into the case with this one little line here pointing downwards like that. So that's why I have an oiling leaking. These are not hard, they are not cracked. I could probably reuse them. I'm not going to because I mean brand new ones are only like three dollars and eighty cents or whatever. Um, but whoever installed this installed them the wrong way. You know, I know mistakes happen. And my connecting rod is uh, now resting on the inside of the skirt of the piston and now we can um, slide the piston ever so slightly back into the cylinder so we don't accidentally pull it all out and then have to replace the piston rings and now I'm just gonna support the connecting rod rest it on my zip tie there you go and pull this whole thing off. The base gasket is still stuck here so they definitely used some sealant. Some people say not to. I say why the heck not because uh, the factory actually does it too. The factory back in the 70s they also used some sealant on that aluminum base gasket and so why shouldn't we? You know? You see, uh, sparing amount of some sealant, some silicone based oh, gasket maker. Hello. All right. Now the base gasket is giving me a hard time here. 
Oh my goodness. There we go. So, cylinder and piston. There you go. And uh, markings on the inside. Mine says 1275, and then on the other side is a 090206 plus. Whatever that means. All right. Um, the piston on the dome will have markings telling you which direction is the exhaust. So once you once you clean up the dome, there's going to be a, an arrow pointing towards the exhaust. That's important. If you really want to make sure you are not messing it up, just take a sharpie to it. Just make your own markings. As many reminders as you need uh, to put parts back the way they need to be. Because it would be kind of a bummer if you go through all this trouble and then you, you have your piston upside down or something like that. So why not just, while you still have it this way, why not just write top on it or something? The Sharpie is not going to you know, do anything, you know? They look good. They need some cleaning. I'll shove a rag here in the opening. I like those um, rag in a box from Walmart. They feel like cloth. They don't behave like a paper towel. They don't fray and they, you don't have little pieces lying around everywhere. And uh, you know, they're not reusable, but uh, you always have a fresh rag on hand. So that. So I'll do my online research and then I'll be back with you guys and we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do, okay? All right, hang in there. That's it guys, disassembly completed. I will do some online research, what are some parts, and when we start cleaning the parts and of course the reassembly, I will be back with you guys. I will also put out a video about this homemade wrist pin removal tool. If you would be so kind to give me a thumbs up and if you like some more, please subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next one. Bye.